So part two of Wet Cloth on Ash Wednesday. You gotta say, why you gotta be so mean and cruel and wicked? Because there are millions, not billions of people who are going to stand before God one day at the Great White Throne Judgment. And they're going to say, well, God, why are you going to cast me off in the hell? Didn't I put ashes on my forehead? Did I not partake of the, of the mass? Did I not relish myself in the small G-O-D-S of the heathen? And God, in his holiness, of all the traditions and all the religious mess, when Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And all the mess that we're studying, I'm trying to help you to do right and believe on the true Jesus. For Paul has written that there are another Jesus, there's another spirit, and there's another gospel. And if you partake of what we're studying, and what I have studied, and the pagan roots of religion, it will come down to God telling you before he casts you off into the lake of fire that burneth forever. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And that's harsh. That's very harsh. The fact is, when you can know the tr truth, and you will not. Let's look at Matthew 7.23. Matthew 7, 23. This is not going to get you to heaven. It may make your priest happy. But it's not going to make your high priest happy. Matthew 7. Verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, and the will of the Father for salvation, is Jesus Christ alone. Many will say, now let's run that many, to chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in a straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. But because strays the gate and narrows the way, which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. There's your heaven or hell. When we come back to verse 22, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Lord, didn't I do the Mass? Lord, didn't I do the Ash Wednesday? Lord, didn't I carry the palm branch? Lord, didn't I buy a candle? Lord, didn't I pray for Uncle Lou and to get out of purgatory? Lord, wasn't I faithful to this? Lord, didn't I belong to this church? Lord, wasn't I baptized? Lord, didn't I sell enough cookies? Lord, didn't I have enough magazine? Lord, didn't I do? Lord, didn't I? Lord, didn't I? Lord, didn't I? Then will I, Jesus speaking, will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. You know what the eyes of God, you know what the mouth of God is saying about this study? It's iniquity. It does not wash away the sins. It builds more sins. Even at the Council of Nicaea, and get part one. This is part two. Hopefully of only part two. The Council of Nicaea, beginning the start date of Lent, was, stayed, was still questioned. In 601, Pope Gregory moved the beginning of Lent from the fourth Sunday of the year to Ash Wednesday, 46 days before Easter. So it's so biblical, not, that the Pope is able to change the dates and times. Not once was Passover changed. This would be the first month the 14th day, and it always stayed the same. The gospel is always that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That has not changed. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and, that shall, and thou shalt be saved. It has never changed. Lent has been changed. 
This change allowed for 40 days of fasting, with six Sundays counted as feast days, for a total of 46 days for Lent. Pope Greg, you know who else did 40 days and 40 nights? Moses, Elijah, and Jesus Christ. You are trying to make yourself like Moses, Elijah, and Jesus Christ. That's all you're trying to do. Pope Gregory also instituted a tradition of making parishioners' forehead, oh, excuse me, marking parishioners' foreheads with ashes in the shape of the cross. That was done in 601 A.D. That was not done in 30 A.D., 33 A.D., 40 A.D., 50 A.D., 70 A.D. That was done in 601 A.D., where they put the ashes on the forehead. The concoction of a man who thinks he's God. Victor of Christ. God charge him. And then uh, ashes, the shape of the cross. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curses everyone that hangeth on the tree, and that tree is the cross. That cross is a curse. Even Baptist churches don't get that. Some Baptist churches have an icon, they have an a aid to worship, they have an idol, and it's the cross. Ooh, that hurt. Ash Wednesday is not mentioned in the Bible. However, let's be honest, from biblical times, sprinkling oneself with ashes has been a mark of sorrow, defeat, destruction. Several times the Bible mentions people repenting and, yeah, let's try that again, sorry. Several times the Bible mentions people repenting and dust and ashes. For example, Mordecai, Esther 4, 1, Job 42, 6, the inhabitants of Nineveh, Jonah 3, 5 through 6, and Daniel 9, 3 through 4. And there's others. But Matthew 6, 16 again, moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Look at me, I'm fasting, I'm a Catholic. That's your reward, there you go. That's works, and man is not saved by works. Look at Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Really. Uh, Colossians chapter 2. Not of works that any man should boast. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Two. Alright. So Ephesians 2. Verse 8. For by grace are ye saved. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Didn't we just read the sacrament and the mass was to impart grace? Did we not just read that part one? For by grace are ye saved through faith. Now the Catholic Church will apply that to their sacrament. But let's read on. And that not of yourselves... <laughs> Yourself goes to that sacrament. Yourself goes to that church. It is a gift of God. Now, Revelation 6.23 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So when you say a sacrament is imputing grace, that's a work. That's a violation of Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. There is the church of the Catholic that go one way and the Bible goes the right way. 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There you go. 
speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanded to abstain from meats. That could be Lent. Forbidding to marry. That's the, that's the priest. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So Paul is specifically prophesying the rise of the Catholic faith. In Catholicism, which is the mother of all Christian denominations, I use that word Christian tongue-in-cheek, priests are prohibited from getting married. In addition, they have instituted a spring fast to the sufferings of Christ. However, such a fast and rituals are rooted not in Christ, but are in pre-Christian pagan worship of antiquity. It is found in the traditions in the ways of paganism, not Bible. The word Lent means spring. It's deprived from the old English word L-E-N-C-T-E-N. -E -E Spiritually speaking, all roads lead to Babylon. And such is the case in regard to the 40-day spring fast. In one version of the Babylonian myth, Tammuz, the great, there he is again, the great hunter, you mean Nimrod, <laughs> there you go, was slain while hunting a wild boar. Devotees mourned for him through weeping ceremonies for 40 days. Did you just get what I read? This Lent that's coming tomorrow, and the, I mean, the, the last Wednesday coming tomorrow, and then Lent that's to follow up to Esther, is not for Jesus Christ, it's for Tammuz. Ask the guy walking around with the, with the ash cross on his forehead if he knows what Tammuz is. And tell him if he doesn't know, then he's worshiping foolishly. Because that's not the mark of, of Jesus, that's the mark of Tammuz. The only marks that Jesus has is in his hands, in his side, and in his feet. Devotees mourn for him through weeping ceremonies for 40 days. During the days of Ezekiel, this ritual was even found among the Israelites. Ezekiel 8, 13-14. He said to me, Turn thee yet again. Thou shalt see a greater abomination by the word of God speaking to Ezekiel. That they do. Then he brought me to the door, the gate of the Lord's house. They are in the Lord's temple, which is toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. It's happening in Bible times. It is in the Bible. Not Lent of the Catholic Church, but the Lent of Tammuz. And God calls it a greater abomination. Lent is a greater abomination if you want a Bible doctrine. If you want a Bible verse, Ezekiel 8, 13 to 14, my friend. There's your Bible verse for Lent. Worshippers of Tammuz went with the group Esther, you call her Easter, believing that his rebirth would mean that regeneration of life within nature. Oh, I go out in the woods, I'm with God, I'm just centered around the birds and the bees with happy clouds and happy trees and... Uh-huh. Open my eyes a little more. Similar feasts are found throughout pagan people of old times. For instance, ancient Egyptians observed 40-day fast in honor of Osiris. Bingo! The Catholic Church in the celebration of Jesus Christ is false. It is surrounded by Ogin. I forgot the name of the... Of the uh, of the Vikings. Let me go back and get that name again. Because there was another name. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Ogin of the Norse God. And then there was Ig, Y G G. And then there was Agni of the Vedic Indian religion. 
You see how the adultery of all religions have come into the mother church. It's the time of Tammuz. Don't you dare put Jesus as the reason for season because Tammuz is the reason for the season. Faith, love, family. Most of your family doesn't love Jesus Christ and the Bible says be separate from them. I've seen family destroy Christian families that are saved. So, Osiris, Egypt, Tammuz, Babylon. The sign of the cross rubbed with ashes is not limited to the Constantine Christianity. That's Constantine. That's the one who founded the Roman government, got all the religions together. He saw the sign of the cross in the battle and to complete victory to those who won't believe in the mother church. It is found throughout the ancient world and is used for projecting symbols of the pagan gods. For example, the toll cross. There's crosses in religions. Was inscribed on the foreheads of the pledges of the mysteries of the Myras. The cross on the forehead. Toll and the mysteries of the Mithras. Pagan. Pagan. It's also interesting to note that the act of simply sprinkling ashes directly on the head, which is also done on Ash Wednesday, was done in honor of the pagan Norse god, again, Odin, as well. Placing the ashes above the brow always occurred on Wednesday, the day named for honor of Odin, and we're repeating, we're repeating as we're going. So you will get the fact is that Ash Wednesday in Lent is not Jesus Christ. It's not Bible. And you will hear from God, Jesus Christ, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But did I not have the ashes of Odin? Who cares? God never instituted Lent, a pagan observance connecting corruption to the supposed resurrection of a false messiah, Tammuz. People who observe Lent may be religious, dedicated, and sincere. But they are sincerely wrong. I'll read that again. Lent may be religious, dedicated, and sincere, but they are sincerely wrong. And it's not out of the mouth of me. It's when the mouth of Jesus says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's where you'll find out you're truly wrong. That's too late. Repent of your sins. If thou shalt believe in thy heart that Jesus Christ is, is risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto salvation. With the mouth, man, uh, so, oh boy, let me do that one. I had another verse in my mind. But if thou shalt confess with thy sins, he is able just to forgive us and to watch us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get out of this nonsense to be saved. All you're doing, every year you do this, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You're just adding more and more and more sin. Thinking your sins are being washed. Thinking God's approved. Thinking you're getting clean. And it doesn't. And when you walk around with those ashes, God sees Odin. God sees all righteous. God says Egypt. He sees Norse gods. He sees small G-O-D-S. He don't see G-O-D-S. G-O-D. Lent originated in the ancient Babylonian mystery religion. And among the pagans, Lent seems to have been an essential initial to get into the annual feast and tribute of the death and resurrection of Tammuz. It's Tammuz's birthday is December 25th. And his mother is Esther. Let us say right up front that if you already know the origins of the Shroud Tuesday, Ash Wednesday, the 40 days of Lent and Easter Sunday, but still stubbornly insist on observing them, then you shall show yourself to be nothing but a Norman Christian like the Roman Catholics, the Church of England, or any one of the major Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian churches who have a name that they live but are dead, Revelation 3.1. Note that all, not all, not all, 
There are people in the Catholic Church. There are people in the Protestant Church. There are people who are in the Charismatic Church. There are people who are in no church. There are people in the temple. There are people, the Jehovah Witnesses. There are people in Baptist churches. There are people who are in those things. They are born again. They are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. They are following the proper gospel, and they are not doing this mess. Not all. But didn't we see many that go the broad way? Shroud Tuesday, or Mardi Gras, is commonly known. Here we go. Ready for this one? Ready for this one? Are you ready? Have you seen signs outside a church? Okay, ready? Here we go. Drum roll. Shroud Tuesday, or Mardi Gras, literally means Fat Tuesday. I know you heard that. But do you know what it means in French? Ready? And in French, means fat. You know what it means in England? Fat Tuesday in French. That sounds good. In England, are you ready? Ready? Church signs now. Pancake Tuesday. How many churches have you seen? We're going to have a pancake dinner. Didn't know that, did you? Oh, look at that church. We're going to have pancakes on Saturday. <laughs> it's association with the Roman Catholic custom of Lent. That innocent pancake service, there you go. The idea behind Mardi Gras, <laughs> or the carnival celebrations. Ooh. You know any church that had a carnival vacation Bible? I do. Is that people overdo or gluttony before giving up something for Lent? Which begins the following day with Ash Wednesday. Today is Mardi Gras. Tomorrow is Ash Wednesday. I know people who go down to New Orleans and witness, and they say they got to be very careful. You don't bring your children. You keep your eyes down. I've talked with them. It's possibly done. I would not fit there. But there is drinking. They have cops on horses the jails get full what, what was it I, I, I suppose the Catholics don't teach that the coming of Jesus Christ would they would you partake of Mardi Gras of having everything and everything you wanted to do hoping that the blessed hope would come while you're having your meat, merry feasting by the way, you do know, at, at, at least in Louisiana, you do know that they throw something when they have their parade. Do so you know what they throw? They throw beads. Do you know what the rosary is? <laughs> Lent is a 40 weekdays from Ash Wednesday to Easter observed by the Roman Catholics. Easter in some Protestant churches as a period of penance and fasting. Deuteronomy 21, 20 to 21. <clears throat> and they shall say to the elders of the city, This is our this our son is stubborn, rebellious, he will not obey our voice. He's a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he die. Whoa. Shows what God thinks of that Mardi Gras feasting. Proverbs 23, 21. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. Oh, Solomon, Luke 7.30. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God. The Pharisees and lawyers rejected God and Jesus Christ. So in Luke 7.34, the, the Son of Man is coming, eating and drinking, and say, Behold, a gluttonous man, a wine bibbler, a friend of publicans and sinners. That's what the enemy was saying about Jesus. The enemies of Jesus were accusing Jesus of Mardi Gras. Even the Jewish Pharisees and lawyers saw Mardi Gras as a complete waste of sin. Hold that to your doors of your Catholic Church. From Ash Wednesday to Easter, many seriously marked their foreheads with ash, fasting, or abstaining from certain foods or physical pleasures for 40 days. This is done supposedly to duplicate the Messiah's 40-day fast in the wilderness. 
Matthew 4, 1 through 12. Some give up smoking. Others give up chewing gum. Still others give up overeating or cursing. People vow to give up anything as long as it prepares them for Easter. And as a common joke is, little boy walks on their parents and they're having a beer. And he son says, well, mom, dad, you said for Lent you're giving up alcohol. He said, no, dear, we're giving up on hard liquor. We can have beer. So the little boy says, okay, well, I said I was going to give up on candy. I'm going to give up on hard candy and eat soft candy. See, there's always ways around. There's a loophole. There's no loopholes in the Bible. Deuteronomy 23, 21. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require of thee, and would be a sin in thee. So if you say for 40 days, I'm going to give up candy. And if you have candy before those 40 days, you are in violation of God and what he said about vows. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 4. When thou vows a vow to God, defer it not to pay it. For he has no pleasures in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. So how many people during Lent, on the first day of Lent, after Mardi Gras, we are going to give up on, hmm, and they don't. And they are considered fools in the Bible. But I suppose they can go to their little confessional book, say, Father, I have sinned, I have last confession, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I said I wasn't going to have any candy for Lent, and I had a piece of candy. I'm so sorry. God says you're a fool. Fool. That will come up in our fool study. People who observe Lent may be religious, dedicated, and sincere, but they are sincerely wrong again. I like that spread. Why I put it in there twice. First, understand that the celebration of the death and resurrection of Christ, to which the preceding quote refers to as so-called Friday, Good Friday, maybe we'll get into that one, wet cloth, and Estar Sunday, how are these deeply rooted in ancient paganism? The Bible says, as Jonah was in the heart of the whale three days and three nights, that Jesus Christ shall be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Right? Good Friday. Jesus Christ died. Good Friday. Ready? Friday night. Saturday night. Sunday morning he arose. That's only two days. See, that makes a gun. Bang. You're dead. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, I celebrate Good Friday. That's too bad because I didn't die on Friday. But tradition. I'm not tradition. I'm the Bible. The Word of God. Christ did not die on Good Friday by math. Calendar. Calendar days disproved Good Friday. How these deeply rooted in ancient paganism. They were instituted by mainstream Christianity in order to counterfeit or replace the Passover season. So they tried to get rid of the Passover. They tried to get rid of the Jewish for paganism, for Gentileism. Lent was never observed by the Messiah or his prophet, uh, apostles. Excuse me. He commanded his disciples, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And Lent and Esther was none of those commandments. Alexander Hyssop wrote in the book of Two Babylons, which try to read, The festival of which we read in church history, history under the name of Easter, in the 3rd and 4th centuries was quite a different festival from which is now observed in the Romish church. And at that time was not known by any such name as Easter. The festival, Passover, was not idolatrous. It was preceded by no Lent. Lent was not observed by the 1st century church. It was first addressed by the church at Rome during the Council of Nicaea in A.D. 325 when Emperor Constantine officially recognized that the church as a Roman emperor state religion. Did you get that? The Catholic Church is a state religion. 
It's not allowed in our country. And yet it's practiced in our country. All military has to have a Roman priest. The White House has a Roman priest. I've seen them. Any other form of Christianity that held to doctrines contrary to the Roman church was considered an enemy of the state. And they killed you. They tortured you. They inquisitioned you. Coming from the Anglo-Saxon lection, L-E-N-C-T-E-N, meaning spring, Lent originated in the ancient Babylon mystery religion. Forty days absence of Lent was directly borrowed from the worshippers of the Babylonian goddess. Among the pagans, this Lent seemed to have been a vital opening to the great annual festival in memorial of the death and resurrection of Tammuz. And that comes from the two Babylons. Again, see? Tammuz was the false messiah of the Babylonians. A satanic counterfeit of the messiah. And you celebrate Tammuz's birthday. You're going to stand before God guilty one day. The Feast of Tammuz was usually celebrated in June. Also called the Month of Tammuz. Remember uh, Ogden had his own day on Wednesday? Lent was 40 days before the feast. Celebrated by another weeping and rejoicing. This is why Lent means spring. It took place from spring to early summer. The Bible records ancient Judah worshiping the false, this false Messiah. Ezekiel 8, 14 to 15 again. Then he brought me to the door, the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Imagine what, when they, imagine what God says about the church today if you read Revelation 3. At a church, we, at Christmas, we get up and sing happy birthday, saying happy birthday to Jesus. Then he said to me, Thou hast seen this, O son of man? Turn thee again, thou shalt see a greater abomination than these. This Tammuz worship is a greater abomination according to the scriptures and has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. To pacify the pagans to normal Christianity, Rome, pursuing its usual policy, took measures to get the Christian and pagan festivals combined. And by, complica by complicating but skillful adjustment of the calendar, so you're going to take our calendar, which has been, I can't say implicated, and you're going to say by our calendar, the date of Jesus Christ, the date of the rapture, the date of the ad. Our calendar is Roman. It was found no difficult manner in general to get paganism and Christianity. Christianity. Now far sunk in idolatry, and this has many other things to shake hands, again, from the two Babylons. This change of the calendar in regard to Easter was attended with important costs. It brought into the church the grossest corruption and the rankiest superstition in connection with the abstinence of Lent, again, from the two Babylons. And I said, we've been in churches, my family, where they've got the Christmas tree. We have lived around the corner from the church. We're going to have an Easter hunt. We're going to have face paintings. In the church, 2018, 2019. We have adopted the customs of the Catholic Church of, of a bake sale. Of a rummage sale. A bingo. Before giving up personal sins and vices during Lent. The pagans held a wild anything goes celebration to make sure they got it in their share of corruption and perversities. The world now celebrates that as Mardi Gras today. There you go. Now I ask for you if, if you have stuck through, I'm sorry it took two parts. But this needed to be all 
Do you think that this should be as a born again Christian activity for you and your family? For me, I trod not. But if you're a worldly Christian, you don't care what the Bible says, go ahead. You'll be found at fault. You will be found wrong. I will stand before God with my sins, and you'll stand before God with your sins. And by what I've read through the Ash Wednesday and Lent and everything to be Mardi Gras, it's something not approved by God anywhere in the Bible. I believe you should fast, and I should believe you should pray. I believe you should be remorse for your sins. If thou should confess thy sins, he is able and just to forgive us our sins. But it's nothing to walk around with something to face in your face when Jesus said it's wrong. And you got your reward. Wash your face. Be happy. Rejoice evermore when you're fasting. When people look around and don't look, oh, look, something wrong with it. Hey, look, that guy's joyful. Inside your stomach's crying out and you're praying for whatever you're praying for. Glory to God. Not nonsense and tradition. 